Well, hey guys, we're so happy you're here. Um, my name is uh, Joshua Ziegler. Um, so, we're so glad you came. As you like saw in the video, yeah, we have tons of fun uh, on Wednesday nights. Um, so, um, a little bit about me. Uh, I'm in 10th grade, and I have been homeschooled my entire life. And I absolutely love being homeschooled. Uh, if you've known me for long, you'd probably find out pretty quickly that I'm an extrovert. Uh, I need to be with people. I am a social person. Uh, people recharge me more than a good book would or being alone would. And so the theme for today is together or community and what it looks like to live in a godly community. And so I'm going to start off by reading Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 42. Um, this is talking about the believers at this time, a group of believers. This is after Jesus uh, died, raised again, and then was uh, ascended into heaven. So this is talking about a group of believers and what they would have been do uh, doing at this time. It says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So it says these believers, they devoted themselves to these four things. They devoted themselves to one, the apostles' teaching, or what we have here in scripture. Uh, they devoted themselves to fellowship, or companionship, friendship, or even just doing an activity together. Uh, they devoted themselves um, to the breaking of bread, or to eating together. And they devoted themselves to prayer. It says every day they uh, devoted themselves to getting together and doing these things. I don't know about you guys, but could you imagine if we got together here every day and ate donuts and drank coffee? It would be pretty unhealthy. <laughs> I think we should do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but I think what is, what is like really cool about this passage, though, is that it says every day God added to the number of those who were being saved. And I read it. I'm like, wait, hold up. Uh, what were these believers doing? They were just getting together, eating food, praying, but they were just having fun with each other. How did God use that and add daily to the number of people being saved? And, like, it was just so curious to me, so I needed, like, to find out more. Um, so in my own life, about a year ago, uh, around the time of Flower City Work Camp, uh, as I said before, I'm homeschooled. So what that means is my friends group, friend groups consist of my fellow homeschoolers and my friends here at church. Uh, so I, growing up, I never really had an opportunity to uh, share my faith or witness to others and tell others about uh, Jesus and lead others to Christ. And so around the Flower City, the theme was witness, so it got me thinking a lot about that. And so I went to my mom and I said, hey mom, I want to get involved um, in an environment where I can more effectively share my faith and I can be tested in my faith. Um, I want to get involved in a group of non-Christians, so like what if God calls me one day to share my faith and I'm just not prepared, I'm not ready, or I'm too scared. Um, but I never did get involved in a group like that, and it was fine. Um, but not too long ago, I was reading this passage, and immediately I thought back to that time when I so badly wanted to be involved in an environment where I can share my faith and tell others about Jesus. Uh, and I like, saw what these people were doing. They weren't in an outreach. They were just getting together with their fellow believers uh, and loving on each other. And that was so powerful, and that brought people to Christ, uh, just them being in community with each other. And I was like, whoa, okay, so I wanted so badly to be out uh, in the world so I could share my faith. But these people, they show that um, when we get together as community, that can be just as powerful, if not more, uh, when we get together. Um, it says, where two or more are gathered in his name, he is there. We are gathered in his name today. God is in this room right now. Um, and that can be so powerful. Um, I believe that when we get together and we devote ourselves to loving each other, that love that we have is so attractive to those who do not already have that love. They see our love and they see how much we love each other and we love God. 
and there's a hole in everyone's lives who does not have the love of Jesus. And they see our love, and they know they need it. They need it to get that love in their lives. And it's so powerful when we get together in community and as one body, the body of Christ, uh, and we just love each other in that environment. Um, God also tells us, go and make disciples among nations. And I feel like sometimes we take that a little too literally and we feel like to make disciples, we need to be in another country or we need to be in a different environment that we're not already in to make disciples. But that's just not true. God can use us wherever we are if it is in his will. He can use us wherever we're at in life and wherever we are literally. And it is also just so powerful and so impactful when we get together as in the church and get together as one body and community. And God can work through work miracles through that when we get together. Thank you.